That down. Let's get on to our favorite topic. Streaming price increases. Ooh. Yeah. Boy. Game day. It's a game day. <laughs> Love it. You know it's a good day anyway. Not surprisingly, <laughs> as we uh, approach the imminent launch of House of the Dragon Season 2 on Max, Max decides to announce a price increase. Yeah. Oh, you want to buy my chicken? You want to watch House of the Dragon, do you? <laughs> Pony up, sucker. You want to be a part of the conversation, huh? <laughs> here we go. Because it's being reported here in Variety, Max hikes prices for ad-free plans effective immediately now it's not admittedly it's not that bad actually uh the article over at variety says this warner brothers discovery has increased the price for the ad free max streaming they're not increasing the prices for the ad supported uh service anyway has increased the price for the ad free max streaming plans just ahead of hbo's house of the dragon season two which premieres on june 16th i'm sure there's no coincidence uh, on those two things <laughs> beginning tuesday june 4th Max's ad-free tier in the U.S. will rise $1 from $15.99 a month to $16.99 per month. And the annual plan will jump from $149 to $169.99. Now, just for those doing the math, that saves you. If you get the annual plan, if you commit to a year, that actually saves you not a lot, but I think like $24, $25. Bucks. Mm -hmm. It saves you over the course of the year. So there's that. The ultimate ad-free tier, well, uh, now that ultimate ad-free tier like gets you uh, Dolby Atmos surround sound, 4K, and under the regular ad tier, the regular uh, ad-free tier, you can have two TVs streaming HBO Max at the same time. With the ultimate, you can have four TVs streaming HBO Max at the same time. Uh, is raising another $1 per month, rising to $20.99 per month. And by $10 per year, bringing the new annual cost to $299. All right. This kind of reemphasizes again a kind of truism that we've been talking about for a few months, which is the idea and the notion that what you get for what you pay for is actually pretty good. Like I still contend, but there's two points here. So follow me on the first point. Listen, $16.99 a month, when I look at the library of what is on HBO Max, it's a value proposition. It's still not bad. It's getting less good every time they increase the prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for $17, bucks, what you get on HBO, not to mention the huge library, but also the young... Like, we got Penguin coming. Right. We got House of the Dragon Season 2 coming. We got that Dune series coming. On top of all the stuff, they, Renfair is on there now. Oh, Go yeah. check out Renfair. I mean, it's still not a bad proposition for what you get. And if price increases were only every couple of years and were only $1... That wouldn't be so bad. Here's though the second point though is this where this actually starts to hurt is not the one dollar a month for what you get on HBO. Where it starts to hurt is our collection of streaming services continue to get more and more expensive every year. Right. Actually, they seem to be getting more and more expensive every couple of months. Because take a look at this. Remember, streaming has not been around for 70 years like CBS or NBC. They've not been around since our grandparents' time. Streamers have only been around a couple of years. Some of them, like three. But I want to take a look at this about where we're talking about our basic ad-free plans. Not ad-supported, not ultimate premium, but like the straightforward ad-free plans. From where they started to where they are now. Hulu, for ad-free, used to be $10 a month. It is now $18 a month for an 80% price increase. Max started, now granted, Max only relaunched itself a while ago, but it started at $14.99. It's now $16.99. Netflix, for your access to everything, full regular ad-free plan, Used to be $8.99, now $15.49. Disney Plus has doubled its price, 100% increase, doubled its price since just a couple of years ago 
from eight ninety nine, sorry, from six ninety nine to thirteen dollars ninety nine cents, or seven to fourteen dollars. Paramount Plus has gone from nine ninety nine to eleven ninety nine. Apple TV Plus has doubled its price. It's still the cheapest out there, but it but you know it's doubled its price from four ninety nine to nine ninety nine. Again, doubled its price, but still the cheapest one there. And Peacock has gone uh, up forty percent from nine ninety nine to thirteen ninety nine. Now, I'm not gonna what what, if, what I did some math here. So we got. Uh, 24, 25, 36, 37, 51, 66, 76, uh, 82, 92. That's a hundred bucks right there. That's a hundred bucks a month just for those ones. And that's without the ultimate premium tier. Right. That's 1200 a year. You just out now, now. Again, this is why I say, even I guess I go down that list, the amount I use Hulu, 18 bucks a month for ad free is not bad. The amount I watch max, 17 bucks a month isn't that bad. The amount my wife watches Netflix, 15 bucks a month isn't that bad. The amount I watch Apple TV, particularly the quality of Apple TV, 10 bucks isn't that bad. The amount that I watch The Office and Peacock on uh or The Office and uh The Office and uh, Parks and Rec on Peacock, 14 bucks a month isn't bad. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Oh my god, when you start to add it up. And that's not even all the streamers. There's a few other services you can have too. And some people like to have the 4K Dolby Atmos streaming and, and suddenly you can be paying like 130 bucks a month mm -hmm. for this. Those bundles are starting to look real good right now. Now that's the thing. That's why the bundles. And I want to point something else out. We want to thank a sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. My favorite spring cleaning takeaway is the post-clean clarity you get. Wow, how have I been living like this? It's kind of like when you find out that you've been paying a fortune for wireless when Mint Mobile has phone plans for just 15 bucks a month when you purchase a three-month plan. My last mobile service provider was quite good, but ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've enjoyed even better coverage, better phone clarity, and I'm paying less than a third of what I paid to my old provider. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all of your existing contacts. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. $45 upfront payment required equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions may apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Notice how right off the top I mentioned that they did not increase the price of their ad supported tier. Yeah. You remember what I guys, what I said about six months ago? I said on this show that what we're starting to see is that the streamers are realizing cable had it right and we've got it wrong. The real money is to be made in ads. And I said about six months ago on this show, what you're going to start to see is little bit by little bit, they're going to start increasing the prices of the ad support of the ad free tiers but they'll keep the ad supported tiers where they are because they're <laughs> trying to herd us like sheep to go into the ad supported plans. Cause even though it's cheaper, they make more money off us there because they're slamming the commercials at us. Right. And that's fine. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It, that's what they want. It's still our choice. If we want to do it, I personally, I would rather pay the extra four or five bucks a month to not have to watch commercials. I can just pause the show whenever I want, but whatever. But listen, it again makes the point that whereas a year or two ago, we just have all the streamers, but we are now at a point and getting more and more into it where we as consumers are going to have to start picking and choosing which services we want to use. It also brings up churn. You know, when I was watching that show, I was talk, talking about earlier, what they what Netflix does is what I what I like that they do is they actually put their ads in where it make where it makes sense. Like it just doesn't abruptly go into a middle of a, someone uh, speaking the dialogue. 
it, they actually cut it in to where it was it was i was actually okay with the ads like it, you know what i mean like they cut it in parts where it made sense and like the show would keep rolling mm -hmm. like and i wouldn't be uh i wouldn't be um it would have pulled me out of the show because if you watch the movie like on like cable like on tnt if, let's say it's rocky four right in the middle of the training montage commercials will happen <laughs> i hate that i i if you're gonna give me ads i like when they're placed properly is what i'm saying yeah you know? i don't think that matters to them much uh, you know i mean for me as yeah. a viewer yeah so like that's why i don't mind ad the ad free on that they, well, they tend they, to i haven't really seen abrupt breaks like i i do ad ones for like uh streamers i don't visit often mm. right right yeah uh, that makes but sense. like the big ones i'm like ad free you know what i mean so but they they do seem to like either put them at the beginning and then at a, a supposed ad break in the edit it seems like it. well see it used to be like cable television shows sure those network were, television shows yeah they were made and shot in a way to have commercial breaks mm -hmm. most streaming shows do not and movies do not so that gets in there too but this brings us back to the whole thing about as these prices increase more and more people are going to start being more selective about which streamers they have and will get more involved in churn. But again, for those of you who don't know, churn is a phrase that we all use that refers to, oh, House of the Dragon's coming on? Okay, I'll subscribe to HBO or now Max. But once House of the Dragon season two is done, cancel. Then when Penguin comes on, I'll resubscribe, then cancel. That's called churn. It is the number one enemy of the streaming services. So that's why you're starting to see HBO, Max, Disney Plus, and Hulu, they're going to offer a bundle deal. We actually had a viewer yesterday that actually said he re signed or re upped his uh, Max because uh, House of the Dragon is. I mean, that, that's exactly it. It's a churn. Well, day, right? and then they're going to coordinate release dates so that you're strategically like, I can't let go of these two because. Right. They about want you signed up yeah. to the bundle deal so that, okay, House of the Dragon is done, but now. I don't know, a, a, a new Black Panther show is coming up on Disney Plus, so you don't want to cancel the bundle, right? So that's how they're going to fight churn, and the price increases are just going to keep going to that. Guys, question is for you. Are you still at the point like me where it's like, okay, I'm willing to pay for all of them, but pretty soon I'm going to have to start getting picky and choosy about that. Are you a churner? Are you already somebody who actively like signs up and unsubscribes and resubscribes depending on which network has a show you want to watch and then you cancel? How is this going to affect everything? How, where do you see this going? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.